Hello, Braxis here, and we be playing some Universe Sandbox 2. So I have a suggestion from AAV, and he asks a pretty simple question. What would happen if we put a pulsar around a black hole that was 100 masses of the sun? They are both incredibly dense objects, so I wonder if the pulsar will actually get ripped apart. Let's go ahead and find out. So let's see, we should have a black hole here that is 100 masses of the sun. Let's go ahead and drop it here in the center. And, well, this should be pretty simple. Let's grab... Let's go with the biggest pulsar that we got. I want to lock the position of this black hole just because I don't want it actually moving because I'm actually going to orb orbit this very, very closely. So let's see. As you can see, the black hole is incredibly dense. Let me pause the game here. When I set this pulsar beside it, this pulsar is actually very, very tiny as well. You can see that this black hole looks pretty big compared to the pulsar. Look at this. Look what happens if I grab an object like Earth. Look at how big Earth is compared to both of them. And that black hole is a hundred suns. This pulsar is two suns. See an idea of how dense of objects we're actually dealing with. So let's go ahead and close these menus and slow down time and let's just see what happens. Will this pulsar be shredded? Oh wow, that is going very quickly. <laughs> And I think the answer is no. It looks like it's actually staying together pretty well. But we could try to reduce the semi-major axis a little bit. Let's see. Under motion, we should have semi-major axis, which is right here. And as you can see, it's only 400 kilometers away from the actual black hole itself. Oh, and it collided in and deleted the pulsar. So I think it's pretty safe to say that I don't think pulsars actually get shredded up in the Roche limit of a black hole, so that's pretty interesting. Of course, the way pulsars kind of are, or neutron stars, yeah, basically, um, they're incredibly dense to the point where, at an atomic level, they're basically like a perfect crystal kind of thing. They're basically in like a perfect... I don't know, I would say not really grid pattern, but the gap between each and every atom is very, very fine to the point where they're pretty much contacting. So, that's the thing about pulsars. Now, I'm noticing my HUD is flickering, and hopefully that doesn't mean the game's going to crash. But let's go ahead and use something like a white dwarf, which is just a dead star, pretty much. Well, not really a dead star, but uh, a star that has lost its outer shell. I'm going to halt the game real quick and place this pulsar around it. So let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit. Okay, it's moving slightly. We're moving 16 milliseconds per second. So pretty slow motion. And it might just scrape by this black hole. I might have put it a little bit too close. I certainly did. So let's move it a little bit further away. And watch this white dwarf orbit around the black hole, which it wants to fly off. I think that's because of the collision of the other neutron star with the uh, black hole has given it parameters to actually move, so now it's just wanting to drift away. Let's launch a new simulation. I will be right back. So I've had to uh, restart the game because it was all bugged out, but let's go ahead and give this another try. Let's go ahead and replace our black hole here. There it is. Not really too visible. Let me change the uh, background again. Should we use? Got yeah, this one. Oh yeah, that's pretty visible. Okay, so here is our black hole. Let's go ahead and add in a white dwarf around it. Which uh, Sirius B is right here. Let's go ahead and slow down time a little bit. And let's just drop this in. And there it is orbiting around the black hole. And that black hole is 100 masses of the sun. And this white dwarf is almost as massive as the sun. As you can see, it's actually causing the black hole to move a little bit. That is still a pretty big mass orbiting around that black hole. But as you can see, it's not actually shredding apart. It's actually holding the other very well. So I guess the next step would probably... Actually, it did lose a little bit of mass, but I think the next step will be to decrease its semi-major axis a little bit. 
Oh, I can't seem to do that, actually. Oh, no, it is actually shredding apart. You can see there's fragments everywhere. So it is actually falling apart. It's just not really visible for some reason. See, there's actually collisions happening on the star as it collides in with its own particles. Very cool. Uh, let's do that in a way that doesn't really uh, <laughs> make everyone dizzy. Yeah, you can't see the particles, but you can see that it is actually kind of getting destroyed in a way. Of course, it's too close to the black hole. It's going to regain most of its mass as it kind of just collides into it. It'll take a long while for it to actually shred apart. Let's go ahead and grab another white dwarf real quick. So once again, we'll use Sirius B and we'll put it a little bit further from the black hole. So let's see if this does anything. Okay, so it is losing mass. But you cannot actually visibly see it actually shredding apart. You see, I think, that there is actually some collisions with the black hole. No, it doesn't appear so. That's just the uh, line fooling me. And yeah, if you look at my mouse, you can kind of see that I'm selecting a bunch of particles. But they're not visible. If I do this with something like a red dwarf, like Proxima Centauri, and put it over here, this will get shredded no problem. should visibly be able to see it. And there it goes, forming an accretion disk around this black hole. A very cool effect. We saw Proxima Centauri actually shrunk a lot. It was equivalent to a thousand masses of Jupiter, now it's only 110. And as you can see, the particles are actually lagging up the game. Actually, I think the star heated up these particles, and now they're actually visible. These are the ones from the uh, White Dwarf. Pretty cool. So the particles that were actually coming off the White Dwarf are actually really cold. And now they're super warm. Uh, there we go. And yeah, the game's kind of lagged up, and I can't really... Uh, Handle this on my PC, so I'm just going to delete all the dust and particles and watch it shred up again. So now it's been demoted to a brown dwarf, and pretty soon here it's just going to be a typical gas giant. Oh, it actually uh, restarted fusion for a moment there and then turned into a brown dwarf again. That was pretty cool. It's because it rega regained enough mass to kind of cause fusion, and it's already warm enough. But, uh, yeah. I don't think it's going to reduce too much more, mainly because the same issue as before. It's running into its own particles. As you can see, the mass is just going up and down, fluctuating like crazy. So, yeah. Anyways, it doesn't appear we could actually shred a pulsar with a black hole. But you can certainly shred white dwarfs and red dwarfs. Anyways, if you guys liked the video, please leave it a like. And if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe. It really does help. And I will see you guys in the next one.